All right, well, if you have your Bibles with you, you can turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew. And we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 8. So you can start to turn there, and we will read the passage in a second. Fear is a natural human emotion, something that we all face, something that we have faced before, we'll face it again. It's a a sense that that hope is lost, that something is about to happen. Sometimes we have good reason to be afraid. Sometimes it's unexplainable why we have this feeling of, of fear. There's plenty of reasons to fear. Even in a normal uh, situation. There's all kinds of reasons to fear, whether there's, there's health issues, whether there's relationship challenges. But we know that, especially with this, this season that we're in, um, with this, this COVID pandemic, there seems to be even more reason to fear. And in some ways, we were just maybe feeling like we were, we were getting ahead of this, that this was behind us, and now we're moving into a season now where this uh, a second wave, the potential of a second wave is is there, and so there can be more fear that comes on us as we think about what the future could look like. And just because you and I are followers of Jesus doesn't mean that we're exempt from fear. It doesn't mean that that, that struggle to be afraid is, is gone. And so I want to look at this passage out of Matthew 8 as we think about how you and I deal with fear. What do we do with with that temptation to be afraid. In this section of Scripture, we see that Matthew, who is the writer of the Gospel, is describing what must have been an incredibly fear-filled experience in his life. So if you have your Bibles there, you can read on with me. Matthew chapter, 20, or Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 23. And reading down to verse 27. Then Jesus got into the boat... And they started across the lake with his, with his disciples. Suddenly a fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up shouting, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Jesus responded, why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves. And suddenly there was great calm. The disciples were amazed. Who is this man, they asked. Even the wind and the waves obey him. And so this is Matthew's account of Jesus calming the storm. It's recorded by some of the other gospel writers as well, but this is is Matthew's take on it. I think the thing that we need to remember here is that, that all the disciples were afraid. But we think about who those disciples were. A lot of them were fishermen. A lot of them were experienced out on the water. They'd been through storms before. They were used to, to, to find their way on boats. But even they were terrified. Well, now put yourself in Matthew's position. Matthew was one of the few of Jesus' disciples that was not a fisherman. He was a tax collector. So this would have been really outside of his experience, really outside of his wheelhouse probably. And so I think his fear was even ramped up higher than those of the other disciples. I mean, waves whipping over the side, threatening to bring the ship down, tearing it, tearing it apart. All of them, especially Matthew, had every reason in the world to be afraid for their lives. And yet we see that Jesus was, was unfazed by it. And I think that, that in this story and what, what Jesus says to his disciples, he also says to us that, that, that in our times of fear, we can have a sense of calm because the presence of God is with us, because the presence of Jesus is with us. It doesn't mean that the fear isn't real. The fear is real, and the feelings of fear are real. But I think despite those things, we can have a sense of calm in the middle of those storms. Because we do experience fear. We do experience anxiety. Following Jesus isn't like taking some, uh, some, some drug that makes all those fears disappear, and we just are walking around with a, a smile on our face all the time because nothing phases us. We're human, and we are affected by these things. Maybe 
outside of even this, this COVID situation that we're in. Maybe you're in a storm right now. Maybe you're facing something that's, that makes you feel uncertain, that makes you feel anxious, makes you feel tempted to, to be a fearful. And maybe like those disciples, you're in that boat and you're, you're looking around for Jesus and he doesn't seem to be anywhere nearby. The disciples found Jesus, though, when they looked for him. He was sleeping. And uh, Mark's passage, Mark's account of this says he was sleeping on a little pillow. Maybe there was a hold under the ship, probably, where, where Jesus was, was underneath there. And how he could sleep with this storm going on, I, I don't know. But apparently he was. Apparently the storm didn't, didn't disturb him at all. But back above deck, Matthew and the other disciples, they were probably wondering how that could even be possible. How is it that we even have to go and wake up Jesus in the middle of the storm? How is it we haven't even asked him to, to come because we're in this thing? He should know this. In the storms that we go through, sometimes we can feel that way as well. We can wonder, where is Jesus? Why isn't he here? He, he knows what we're going through. Why isn't he doing something and making himself present and feel present right away? Does he even care? But as we look at how Jesus responds to their fear and how Jesus responds to the situation, I think there's something powerful that's here and something powerful that will be able to help us as we go through these times of fear ourselves. Look at the words of Jesus. When they wake him up, he says, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. And then he calms the storm. And I think if we, if we read over that, and it, I mean, it's a passage that's very familiar to us, and we can easily miss out on, on what's happening here. But Jesus, I think, gives a really powerful lesson about the relationship between fear and faith here. And we can easily skip over it and miss it. And I think the teaching is this, and I think it's a radical teaching. It was radical for the disciples, and I think if we really grab hold of it for ourselves, it can be a radical teaching for us too. And it's this is that when we're dealing with fears, we don't need the situation to change. What we need is more faith for it. We don't need our situations to change. Our peace, our freedom from anxiety, our freedom from fear isn't situation dependent, or it doesn't have to be. As we choose faith rather than fear, we can overcome that. Because faith opens up our eyes. Faith is, isn't seeing, but it's believing. Regardless of whether our fear is out of the circumstances that we're in, or whether it's something that's, that's very, very real, there's a relationship between fear and faith that Jesus gives us here. The more faith we have, the, the more we can rest ourselves on, on him and trust him, the more freedom from fear and anxiety we'll have. Fear and faith are absolutely related to each other. How do we grow in our faith? Uh, I think it's just one of those things that we have to do. We, we choose faith. Like we said, fear, is, uh, a fear really is an absence of faith, and faith is believing without seeing. It's believing without evidence. And so when we choose to, to exercise faith, we're choosing to, to rest ourselves completely in God. Even when we can't see what he's doing, even when we can't see actions, even when we don't see any resolution to the situation that we're in, when we choose faith, we choose to, to rest in God, we'll begin to experience freedom from fear. We choose faith. We choose to rest. There's a couple of things in this passage, too, that I think I want to point out as well that we see from Jesus here. The first is that, that being at rest in the storm really is the ideal. That's what Jesus is showing us here. Jesus is showing us that it's possible for us to be at rest, to be at peace, even in the storms of life. It doesn't mean the situation is gone. It doesn't mean that, that, that the danger has passed. 
But we can walk through those things, we can walk through those storms, we can walk through those floods, and yet still be at rest in the midst of them. And I don't know whether Jesus was really asleep, or whether he was down there intentionally just staying out of the situation to, uh, to, to teach them a lesson. I'm, I don't know what the situation was, but whatever it was, Jesus was at rest. Jesus wasn't in, in a panic mode. He was at rest in the situation. And I think he was modeling that for his disciples. And then he comes up and he, he teaches them. He shows them about this, this relationship between fear and faith. Asking, why are you so afraid? You have so little faith. We can have peace in the storm. It's the kind of peace that I think Paul talks about when he writes in Philippians 4. That, that peace that passes understanding. That peace that defies understanding. That in terms of the, the world makes no sense. We shouldn't have peace in a, in a certain situation. We should be anxious. We should be stressed. We should be motivated to try and do something to get ourselves out of it. But when we're able to pray with that kind of great faith and confidence that God has already got it, we'll begin to experience more and more this, this peace that, that both Jesus models and Paul talks about. I think another lesson that we see here is that, that when God seems to be sleeping, he's actually active. God is not caught off guard by any situation that we're in. He's not surprised by anything. He might seem to be inactive. He might seem to be sleeping. We might wonder, God, where are you in this situation? And it might feel like he's, he's sleeping in the hold underneath, missing out on all the action that's going on up above. But he's really active. He's really there. I mean, Jesus probably was physically tired. Uh, it, it was probably exhausting for him being followed around by crowds and constantly ministering, constantly um, uh, pouring out to people. And so probably there was an aspect of it where he was physically tired, so he went for a rest. But he was still God. He still knew what was happening. And he still got up and shut that storm down, showed that he was in charge of the storm. And so in the situations where we begin to wonder sometimes, We've been going through this situation for such a long time and it doesn't seem to be getting better. It doesn't seem to be resolving. Let's remember that even though it seems like God is asleep, he's there and he's active. And then the third lesson that we can learn from this is that if Jesus is in your boat, you've got nothing to worry about. And that's something that we, we choose to do. We choose to invite Jesus into into the boat, into the storm that we're in. It's something that we, we recognize that we can't do it ourselves. We can't get through this by ourselves. We need to invite Jesus there and invite him to take control. Invite him to lead us. These storms we go through might seem insurmountable. That might seem too big for us. We might not be able to see any way out of this. I think that's probably the way Matthew saw it. There's an interesting little, little tidbit of when you look back at the original languages. When Matthew is describing, or first of all, when, when Mark and some of the others and Luke are describing this storm, they use a certain Greek word that, um, that, that is about water. It's about surging water to describe the, the tossing and the turning of everything that was going on. Matthew uses a different word. Matthew uses a word, a Greek word, seismos, which is really not about water. It's about earthquakes. It's about the shaking. Because he wasn't a fisherman. He didn't really have that, that kind of lingo, and that wasn't the word that he went for. So Matthew felt like he was in an earthquake. Everything was, was shaking around him. And so in, even in the earthquakes that we face, they seem big. They seem impossible. Jesus is still there as we invite him into those situations. Only Jesus can calm the storm. And he might not do it right away. Jesus didn't prevent the storm from coming, but he was present in it. 
Jesus may not stop the storm that we're going through right away, but he can bring us freedom from the fear. Faith is made for times of fear. When we are fearful, when we're tempted to be anxious, that's when we need our faith to be, to be mustered up. That's where we need our faith to, to be strong. That's where we need to remind ourselves and remind each other of those times where in the past God has been there, where it's, it seemed impossible. But God has shown himself to be real. He's shown himself to be present. We need our faith to grow. We need our faith to be strong. And I think as we do that more and more, our faith builds more and more as well. Fear and faith don't really go together. Jesus said, you have little faith. Why are you so afraid? And then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves and it was completely calm. When fear grips us, when anxiety feels like it's going to overwhelm us, let's focus on our faith. Let's focus on who God is, who we know God to be, and stand on him. Ask God to increase our faith. Ask God to remind us that he really is there, that he really is trustworthy, that we really can rest in him. Let's pray. God, we go through many kinds of storms. We face many kinds of uncertainties and anxieties and fears. They relate to our jobs. They relate to our families. They relate to our health. Right now, they relate to this COVID situation. And God, thank you that we can know that you are there and present. That even though you don't always stop the storms right away, that even though you don't prevent those, those storms and those earthquakes from hitting us, thank you that we can know you're present. And thank you that we can know that you have the power, that you have the authority to stop those storms. And so God, when we're tempted to be fearful, remind us that we need to be faithful. And help us to remind each other and encourage each other to rest in your goodness and to rest in your power. In Jesus' name, amen.